Well, welcome everyone. We have Shane here again from Migro. Looking specifically here, we're going to look at the effect of blue, green, red light on plant growth. And this always, you know, begs the question of do the other colors matter? We talked about photosynthesis and par and intensity in some other videos, but we're looking at blue, we're looking at green, we're looking at red. What do these colors, are these the most important colors? Do we need a blending of these colors? What do these colors do to the plant? So I'll leave it to Shane to give us a little bit more insight into these three main colors and how they affect plant growth. Yeah, so if we could cover before PAR, that is photosynthetically active radiation, is the light that plants use uh, in the photosynthesis reaction, so they use to grow. And the range of light intensity in PAR ranges from 400 nanometers up to 700 nanometers. That in visual terms is, is blue, green, and red. So there's full spectrum of visible light. And plants do react a little differently um, to those different spectrum. Uh, starting off with blue spectrum. So blue generally will moderate plant uh, height. And um, it does that by moderating the internodal distances. That's the, the distance between branches in the plant. Um, if we have a low percentage or an absence of blue, from the light spectrum, plants will generally tend to grow uh, uh, taller and stretch. Uh, this is not what we want in an indoor growing situation. We want short, dense plants. Uh, we want that so they don't go out of control and that they stay within our grow area. We also want that because we want the plants to put the energy into flowers and not necessarily lots of stalks uh, and branches. And the other spectrum, so we move to green. Green, I would see sort of as, as a fairly neutral in terms of plant shape. Um, so a higher or lower proportion of green will generally not change the, um, the plant shape. However, it does have benefits in terms of included green in that it, um, it goes deeper. So it penetrates deeper into the leaf than blue or red, um, enabling photosynthesis deeper into the leaf tissue. It also will bounce around in the canopy um, and therefore having green as part of the spectrum gives a higher rate of whole plant photosynthesis. Mm. Um, so including it does in increase the overall photosynthesis occurring, uh, the rate of it occurring. Then red, red again is, is not, um, does not affect plant shape as such. However, it is the most photosynth photosynthetically um, efficient. Um, so it uh, red photons will cause more photosynthesis in relative terms than, than blue or green. It's not a huge difference, but it's, it's significant. Uh, and also red photons are lower energy photons. And that, that means they're electrically um, uh, easier to produce or cheaper to produce from an energy point of view. So um, red is very useful to have in part of your spectrum to increase the whole system efficiency, both from electrical and a photosynthetic point of view. Yeah, thanks for that breakdown of there, the blue keeping the plants nice and yeah, squatty morphology, definitely important for indoor growers, which typically are the ones using supplemental lighting. The ever controversial green light, where you're all right, this bounce around, does kind of reflect in there, um, does deeply penetrate into the canopy. And then the red light, we hear a lot about in lighting, you know, the uh, red intense light or more red, you know, kind of as you get into flower uh, or some higher red producing bulbs. It is true that it is easier to produce and it also has those uh, plant benefits as well. So that brings up the question, you know, if we hear a lot about these different colorations, are they all needing the same amount or intensity? Or should there be times where we're shifting? Uh, should we worry about one more than another? Uh, just speak to those kind of specs, those um, wavelengths on how they relate to the plant and what it needs in the intensity of each. Yeah, so as I said, with regard to blue, it is critical um, for indoor growers to have blue in the spectrum. It's been shown that about 3%, a minimum of about 3% blue is sufficient to get a reasonably short growth. However, increasing that percentage blue up to maybe 12, 15% will give you increasingly shorter plants. So it is beneficial to have uh, up to around 15% blue in the spectrum um, for indoor growers, just to, to ensure that the plants are as short and dense as possible. Uh, beyond that, um, it doesn't really add any extra benefit. 
and to increase beyond that level. Mm. Um, generally, then having that minimum amount of blue, which is critical with the balance of the spectrum, as, as we said before, red is the most efficient. Mm -hmm. um, so we're looking to have as much red as possible um, and then a filler of green uh, and green being critical, as you said earlier, for you know that, that whole plant photosynthesis, mm -hmm. but also so that we can see the plants. So mixing the blue, green and red, maybe you remember this from school, uh, that equals white light. And white light is visually allows, allows us to visually see the plants clearly uh, inspect the plants, see any deficiencies um, in the plants with regard to nutrients or, or pests, disease, that type of thing. So white light overall, having a mixture of, of blue, green, and red is, um, is beneficial from the whole plant point of view, plant health point of view, from a photosynthetic efficiency point of view, uh, and also for, for us, the grower, to see what's going on. Yeah, I like having this uh, collaboration. I like the quant the quantifying for the blue light and the percentages and how that will affect different plants and the importance of white light, not only for the plant itself, but as you mentioned it on so well is that grower being able to walk down that plant, inspect that plant, pick out potential nutrient deficiencies, potential insects, potential disease, uh, much, much quicker. And if you're growing under kind of a filtered light that's only one particular wavelength or a limited wavelength, it does make it much harder for even uh, well-trained tra well growers to be able to pick out differences. That white light looks nice, makes it really easy, um, and really allows the growers, hopefully, to appreciate their plants and to notice if one's not going quite right. Mm -hmm. um, so again, thank you for your detail here on the breaking down that blue, green, and red light, and hope this helps everyone out better understand uh, these spectrums of light.